Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to take a look at 10 pieces of open source software that I have installed on pretty much every Linux installation I've ever done. Alright, so let's get started. Number one is a little program called BTM. It is a terminal based uh, system monitor pretty much. Very simple. Um, here you can see all of your CPU cores. If you take a look down here you can see sensors for temperature. In my case, it only has these three for my CPU, Wi-Fi, GPU. If we take a look right here, you can see my two disks right here. Um, if we take a look below that, there's actually a little um, task scheduler here. You can take a look through there and see all of your programs that are running and what resources they may be or may not be using. Right here, we can monitor our network. Um, and what's really cool about it is you can actually, with the mouse wheel, you can scroll it to get a different scale on the graph. Um, same with the memory graph or the CPU usage graph. Um, very cool. So that's BTM. Next we're going to take a look at a program that's called Genie. Genie is a fantastic IDE. Um, I use it for any, any text editing really, unless I'm behind the terminal. Um, so let's just open open up something here. Let's look for my bash RC. So we'll go home dot bash RC right there. Let's open that up. So what's really nice about it is it has syntax highlighting for pretty much any programming language that you can think of. Um, and it also does change a lot too. Let's say I get rid of that quotation and you notice that now all of these things are no longer read. It's saying, hey, there's a problem here. Take a look at your code. So Genie's a really fantastic IDE to use. No, we don't want to save that. All right, so the next program is a video uh, player, media player, if you will, because it also will play music. This is the VLC media player. Um, we can go ahead and open up one of our videos from a your favorite YouTuber and we can pl press play on it, we can pause it. Um, I don't want to kill you guys with sound here, so we'll just turn it down. This is VLC Media Player. Very helpful, very good program to use. Um, it's also cross-platform compatible, as is VLC and Genie. So both of those will also work for Windows or Mac, as well as um, Mozilla Firefox, which is our next one we're going to take a look at. Firefox is a free and open source cross-platform web browser. Um, you can see my homepage here, the Gen2 Linux homepage. Uh, let's take a look at the handbook. Um, as you can see, Preparing the disks. You know what, we need more tabs open. Let's open up YouTube. Let's come over here. We'll go ahead and we'll open up a um, new private window. I, I'm feeling like I need some privacy right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at my Google Movies. Uh, what? I'm not signed in? That's crazy. How about Netflix? Well, you see, it's a private window, obviously. So that's just what I'm trying to show you. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this is one of your favorite uh, web browsers, and if it isn't, it should be, because Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome are garbage. Alright, so the next program we're going to take a look at is number five on the list, and that is the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP. Um, this is another wonderful program. I use this to make all of my thumbnails as well as crop other photos or even make memes honestly. You can do anything you like with this. Um, let's take a look at the thumbnail for this video just so we can show you something that already exists. Let's change the color here. Let's, um, let's go ahead and let's change the color of the GIMP guy too. Yeah, that's cool. All right, there you go. That looks great now. Um, so you can really do anything you like with this. Um, the GNU, um, oh, look at that. There's multiple layers here. 
See, I'm honestly not a professional with this program by any means. I'm still fairly new to it. But it is almost it is your free and open source alternative to things like Photoshop. Um, this is a wonderful program though because it is free and open source. Um, we can open up multiple layers for example. We can go ahead and open up this image right on top of that one. And what we want to do actually is we want to change what layer this is on. Let's merge it down. Oh, it's merged with the GNU logo. Okay. Anyway, this is the GNU image manipulation program. It is a really cool piece of software. I'd recommend it to professionals and novice select. All right, number six on the list is a terminal-based file explorer called Ranger. Um, I've noticed that Ranger doesn't really get a lot of love on YouTube with a lot of these Linux users that I've watched, but Ranger is a fantastic program. You can use it to um, take a look at all kinds of your files uh, from directly behind the terminal, behind the TTY, wherever you're at. And one of the best parts about it is that it actually uses the Vim key bindings, so we can actually just press slash to search. We can use HJKNL to as your arrow keys. We can come down here. We can preview all of our um, files here, and it will actually show you the text. It'll cat it out right there on the screen, which is very handy, so you don't have to open them all up all the time. But let's say you want to open that, well you just go right again and it'll go into your uh, default text editor which in my current case is Nano as I am currently uninstalling Vim and reinstalling a vanilla Vim. But anyway here we are in GNU Nano which is a fantastic text editor by the way. I don't know why it gets the hate that it does. Um, next we're going to take a look at Another program, uh, by the way, to quit out of this, it's just the same as Vim, just colon Q. Next program on the list, number seven, is Gcrelm. Gcrelm is a, another good program. Um, this is a highly configurable system monitor. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, we can monitor whatever temperatures or fans you may have in your PC. I don't have fans in this PC because they're pointless. Uh, this is a completely fanless computer. No bloat. Um, if we take a look down here, you can monitor all of your CPU cores independently, for example. Although that makes the GUI a little bit menacing when it can't even fill. I need a bigger display is what I need higher resolution. Absolutely um, check out Gcrelm if you haven't already. It is a wonderful on-screen um, system monitor. In my current configuration you can see my CPU usage. You can see the processes running. Here you can see the temperatures that I'm currently monitoring. And if we take a look right here you can see SDA or my hard drive is currently being used for this recording. And if we take a look down here, you can see SDB, or my SSD, where my operating system lives. Uh, this is monitoring my Wi-Fi signal, as I'm going off of Wi-Fi on this system. Um, overall, a fantastic program. If you don't have it, you should. Uh, the next program we're going to take a look at is none other than the ubiquitous OBS Studio. OBS Studio is everywhere. Everyone uses it who records with Linux I don't want to say everyone, I'm sure there's a, a minority, but OBS Studio, there I am, you can see me. You can use this program to do all kinds of things. Uh, for example, let's just open up this run prompt here, and then we'll go down to um, plain window capture, and we'll change our window capture device, and we'll set it to go to the application finder. So now you're just seeing that. But if we go and we take a look at this one right here, there I am again. We can take a look at the plane without me. But let's let's leave me in the corner for the rest of this. That sounds great. So 
All right, guys, so next we're going to take a look at another program here. The next one on the list after OBS Studio is LibreOffice. So we'll close the terminal. Uh, LibreOffice. The LibreOffice suite has everything from your built-in writer document. There's a spreadsheet. You have a presentation. You can, um, you can open this up. This is pretty interesting. Um, you can open up PDFs and sign them with this if you're a, a bit of a wizard. Um, it's it's kind of like Microsoft Paint back in the good old days of Windows XP. Um, after that, we can also take a look at... Let's open up LibreOffice Impress. I like Impress. Um, let's make a quick presentation real quick. So this is a presentation. Oh. Let's um, take a look at some of the other things you can do here. We can add all kinds of effects, for example. We can have slide transitions. I really like to have the, the wedge. This one's really nice. And let's go down here to slide two. I like the fade on this one. Let's take a look at slide three. We'll give this the iris. Let's take a look at slide four. Slide five, we'll give this the wedge again. How about slide six? We'll give this one the vortex. That's beautiful. Slide seven, let's go with the checkers. All right, guys, let's take a look at this slideshow here. Wow, look at those effects. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Good gravy. Wow, can you believe this is free as in cost and free as in freedom? Wow. To think this software isn't even spying on me right now. I could have paid money for the Microsoft Office suite, but no. This is just so much better. Look at that. Wow. Holy smokes. Alright, so I think those were all the effects that I did. That's a quick look at that. We're not going to really take a look at all of these, but real quick, we'll just go over and let you know that I'm not really sure what base is, gonna be honest. I don't use it. Calc, this is kind of like your uh, spreadsheet, you know, Excel, if as it were. LibreOffice Math. It, math is also very useful. Um, we can take a look at LibreOffice Writer. This is something if you're writing a novel. Um, this is a word document and then we'll just go ahead and we'll file and we'll save this as we'll go into my documents here and we'll name this document all right so that's LibreOffice that's number nine on the list. Number 10 on the list is another program that um, if you may already be familiar with, honestly, it is a program called Gparted. Gparted requires root privileges to run because it is, oh, wrong password. Because it is a partition manager, you can use Gparted to configure and adjust the partitions on your disk. So, you see that? That means don't mess with this. Don't mess with that. You really shouldn't mess with the rest of it either, because this is obviously where my operating system is. But, we can take a look at the size of the disk, how much is used, the unused. Um, you can see the flags that I've given. For example, I gave my grub partition its own flag. If we take a look over here, you can see my hard drive that I've aptly named Steam Games. You can see that it's a little bit over half full right now. Um, overall though, Gparted is most powerful if you wanted to adjust a partition on a disk. So we don't want to do that right now because these are the only disks on my system and I don't want to corrupt anything with them mounted, but you can do that. 
Anyway, Gparted is a very powerful and very helpful uh, tool. You can also use it to manipulate another system just from plugging in a USB. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, it's been great. I will catch you again next week. This has been Linux with Zach.